The views and opinions expressed in this podcast do not necessarily reflect those of any major corporation whatsoever. It is possible, however unlikely, that the people who are listening to this epi- episode epinode, haven't actually heard all 131 episodes that have led to this 132nd episode. And, and, and it, that's a shame because we really are a highly serialized episode. You can't just yes. jump in. You can't just listen to episode 32 of Welcome to Night Vale. You know, you have to you have to gradually ease your way in from episode one all the way up to the new episodes. You can't just randomly start listening to our podcast. It's impossible. That's why. And, you, and you'll episode. never realize that it's because of Angelique that Barnabas is a vampire to begin with. Exactly. The, mm-hmm. These are things that you need to know. So that's why we start every episode with a previously on, like ER, so so that you, the listener, can be caught up to date with what we are doing here on the podcast. It's a public service. We really are heroes, modern day heroes. So without any further ado, previously on the Pope on Film, last week was a tense melodramatic episode of the Pope on Film, not since Rebel Without a Cause has America been so amazed by drama. Mm -hmm. One of the greatest works ever created. Move over, Tennessee Williams. (laughs) Last week, Maxwell was attacked by a gang member named Chris R., because Maxwell owes Chris R. some drug money. Yes. That was a tense scene on on a roof. And, and the background of the roof was just all CGI. It's the CGI roof. Yeah. Where Maxwell was attacked by Chris R. And then, of course, uh, it, it was a shock last week to learn that Bunny is the best customer at the local flower shop. <laughs> Although something tells me that it probably isn't sanitary to have a pug on the counter of the local flower shop i would call like the department of health and human services over that yeah something tells me that that's not kosher uh i didn't get the promotion last week and i was really upset about that uh because i have saved them so much money so natasha got me drunk despite the fact that i never drink alcohol Mm -hmm. So last week I was going, I'm tired, I'm wasted, I love you, honey. And then, of course, Natasha got the test results back. She definitely has breast cancer. Mm-hmm. Yeah. She said it like it was no big deal, like, like she didn't care that she had breast cancer. Also, last And week, it was she- treated as such. <laughs> yeah, and last week featured a ton of gratuitous sex scenes between Bunny and Jeannie that really just kind of just blew us away. Like, wow, a lot of sex scenes, a lot of sex scenes, and a lot of shots of Bunny's butt. A lot of shots of Bunny's naked butt. Mm -hmm. And then then one of the most shocking parts is that Amber came out and said that Bella hit Amber, and Bella spent most of the podcast just walking around the house going, I did not hit her. I did not hit her. It is bullshit. I did not. <laughs> oh, hi, Emerald. And then, of course, Emerald and Amber went off and played f- football in an alley while wearing tuxedos, which which is what the young kids do nowadays. Yes. And finally, Bunny and Jeannie had a fight at the end of the last episode, during which Bunny yelled the amazing line. Go ahead and say it again, Bunny. You're tearing me apart, Lisa. Yeah, it's it's the greatest drama ever. Last yes. week's episode was the greatest drama ever. Unless people hate it, then we'll just say it's a comedy. Man. And that was last week on the Pope on Film. And I yes. hope that everybody's caught up now. I hope that everybody's caught up. I was going to try and do previously on based on some sort of pre- prestige drama like Oz or The Sopranos or something, but I'm just so excited that we're finally doing The Room. <laughs> I just couldn't wait. We're doing the room, guys. We're doing the room. This is the room episode. We're doing the room. I'm so excited. We're doing the room. 
I, I a long time ago I read the book about the room, the disaster artist. So when we get to the story of the making of the film, it kind of uh, is yeah, insanely detailed. God, this fucking movie. Oh yeah. man. Hold on, hold on, Maxwell. Hold on. Just wait on the guest, okay? Because uh, we're talking about the room here. Am I right in thinking, Bunny, again, that that this was your first time watching the room? This was my first time watching the room. Ah, amazing. Amazing. This is your first step into a much larger world. It 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 it, it was amazing. It was bad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, one some stand-up comedian who has a small part in the upcoming movie about the room leaked the story to the press that James Franco directed the movie as Tommy Wiseau. <laughs> so that led people to go to James Franco and ask him, like, "So did you really, did you really uh, direct the film in character as Tommy Wiseau?" And he goes, "Yes and no. Did I record it as Tommy Wiseau? No, but." A, I do play Tommy Wiseau in the movie, and his accent is so bizarre that when you get the accent, it's best to hold on to the accent. Because yeah. <laughs> that accent is so absolutely bizarre, and no one in the world actually speaks like that. No. Because he is an alien from outer space. So when he gets the accent, he just keeps it for the rest of the day because he might need to be on camera again, and he'll totally lose this bizarre impossible to have accent mm -hmm. how weird is it just to skip to the end how weird is it that right now people are talking oscars for a movie about the room they're talking uh, they're talking oscars for that thing they're talking oscars they're talking oscars i didn't even There's know it had come out yet no, it's coming out at the end of the year. I figured out a rough estimation of it's the coming out at oscar time then yeah yeah uh huh. That would be hysterical. I I I want it to win now. It's yeah. got to win because that would be that would be the most ridiculous thing to happen. Yeah, I'm really excited because not only does James Franco play Tommy Wiseau, but his younger brother Dave Franco, whom I really who I fell in love with in fucking Twenty One Jump Street. Uh, he plays uh, Greg Sisteros, the guy who plays Mark. Uh huh. So I really just love uh, uh, James and his younger brother Dave Franco in this movie as Tommy Wiseau. And oh, hi, Mark! I'm so excited about that. <laughs> That's gonna be great because they're already brothers and they love each other. So their relationship together on the screen should just be fucking wonderful. As Tommy Wiseau in Ohio. Now, now, this movie has got to be based on a part of Tommy Wiseau's life. It's based on. It's the movie is based on the book, The Disaster Artist, which is about the making of the room through no, the no, no, eyes no. of no, Francis no. I, I, I mean the room. Oh, the room itself. Yeah, yes. I want to know what I want to know what woman hurt Tommy Wiseau is what I want to know. Because the fucking thing, the thing that killed me about this whole movie, okay, is like yeah. for someone who is an amateur writer, okay. Who thinks, yep. hey, I have this really interesting thing that happened to me in life. I'm going to make a movie out of that. Yeah. This is the fucking movie you would make. Okay? Because yeah. nowhere at any time does Tommy Wiseau ever do anything wrong. Oh, yeah. Never. No, he, is, he is perfect. He is absolutely perfect in this film. He is perfect. He is pure as the driven snow. He hasn't done, he hasn't, everybody is just out to get him. Yeah. And yeah. I found, I found that hysterical. And that's what really made me sit back and be like, this happened to you, didn't it? Yeah. This, this is it. This happened to you and you wrote it down exactly as you remember it. Cause yeah. we all remember shit that way. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, 
I imagine that someone must have broke his heart into a, some woman must have broken his heart into a million pieces well, because dude, women are fucking not, look at his face. You know, <laughs> yeah, women women are all horrible liars according to this film. Yes. No woman can be trusted. Every woman is a horrible person. Like this is an insanely ridiculously amazingly sexist film. Mm-hmm. So, someone must have really put his ass through the ringer, you know? Yeah. He has been through the blending machine of love. <laughs> he has definitely been a survivor of Hurricane Debbie. Yes. 